Mr. Dixon, right? Um, M-A-R-K-D-I-X-O-N. My name is Mark Dixon, and I'm a filmmaker, and citizen, and activist. I've looked at, uh, through my film work, environmental issues in all 50 states. I have six main points to share with you today. Point number one, thank you. Thank you for holding this public hearing and for listening to our comments. Few things will matter as much in the course of human history as the climate change policies that we choose to create and implement today. Point number two, go further than you think you can. This plan does not go far enough in reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Indeed, rate-based emissions restrictions create a massive loophole, allowing infinite emissions so long as we emit more efficiently. Who are we kidding? When you confront the laws of physics, there are no prizes for doing the best you can. No prizes for economic viability. The only prize goes to the civilization that gets to zero greenhouse gas emissions before we run out of space in the atmosphere. We'll get that prize if we set the bar high enough to galvanize the genius of a generation towards such a noble cause. But this plan does not set the bar that high. In its present form, your plan seeks short-term economic viability in exchange for my future and my children's future. Why choose anemic change at the expense of inspiration and deep innovation, at the expense of reality, and at the expense of the moral high ground? Point number three, natural gas is not a bridge fuel. Natural gas as a path to climate stability is a non-starter. When you burn it, you get CO2, and when it leaks, it's much worse than CO2. If this is a bridge fuel, then show me the plans for the bridge. We need to look at fuel sources that reduce our greenhouse gas emissions dramatically from coal. And the very fact that there's a debate about whether the full life cycle of natural gas emits more or less than that of coal proves to me that we can accept neither. Point number four, exported carbon emissions are just as bad as local ones. States that export fossil fuels should count the greenhouse gas emissions impacts of those exports against the, their progress towards the targets set forth in your rule, particularly if the exports go to locations outside the jurisdiction of this proposed rule. Point number five, industry will complain, except for you. <laughs> Industry tends to complain about how regulations are hard or impossible to meet until they're forced to comply with them. It's virtually their obligation to do so. Your obligation, and the reason we're here today, is to develop the boundaries for what we find acceptable and then require industry to work within those boundaries. When industry complains, you must ask how those complaints stand up against the well-being of countless future generations. Point number six, don't play chicken with our climate. Our nation's approach to climate change feels like an epic game of chicken. Humanity is in a car with our foot on the gas, accelerating towards a brick wall of climate catastrophe. Meanwhile, we're debating whether to let up on the gas by a quarter or a half an inch. It's time to take our foot off the gas pedal and put it on the brake. We only get one chance at a healthy planet, and every decision we make takes us closer to or further from that opportunity. Why risk such beauty? beauty? Why risk such a gift on a juvenile game of chicken? That completes my six points. In summary, I thank you for your time and consideration. I encourage you to go further than you think you can because your decisions on this issue must stand the test of time. Natural gas is not a bridge fuel if its merits are debatable. Exported carbon emissions are just as bad as local ones. And finally, industry will complain, but you have a professional and moral responsibility to ensure that your policies do not play chicken with our climate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. I'll ask the panelists if they have any questions.